and welcome to Contemporary Philippine Art from the Region. In our previous lesson, we described art as means of expression, or expression that requires imagination, or skill in making aesthetic objects, or encounters that can be shared with other people. And the term visual arts encompasses a wide range of forms created by Filipinos. It ranges from Western influenced visual art forms to work created by folk and indigenous people. Traditionally, these visual art forms include painting, sculpture, and architecture. And for today's presentation, we're going to tackle the different visual art forms. The first traditional visual art forms to be presented is painting. Painting refers to the process of applying color on a flat surface. Forms can be created using a wide variety of materials such as watercolor, acrylic, ink, oil, pastel, and charcoal. Surfaces or surfaces for painting include wood, canvas, cardboard, and paper. Painting is considered two-dimensional, meaning it only has height and width. Next is the different forms of painting. First is the easel painting. The easel painting is perhaps the most common form of painting which involves applying color to a board or canvas that is fixed on an upright support called an easel. These are meant to be framed and hang on a wall, uh, hang on a wall after creating them. Next is mural paintings. A mural is described as a huge wall-sized painting used to impart messages to the public. A new form of mural, which is a portable mural, was developed in order to prevent the mural from being erased from the wall which was created by using bold strokes in applying bright colors on pieces of cheesecloth or canvas. Talon painting. A talon is described as a backdrop or background for the stage which is used for Comedia, Sarsuela, and Sinacolo, the popular forms of theater in the country. Jeepney and Kalesa painting. The Kalesa is typically painted using one color. The borders of the Kalesa are decorated with geometric pattern, repetitive patterns, or in thin lines. While Jeepney painting evolved from Kalesa painting, in a typical Jeepney, a logo, number, or painting is covered near the driver's seat as well as near the seats adjacent to it. Next is collage painting. So collage refers to a form of painting that involves combined images in a single artwork. This entails cutting and pasting materials such as paper, fabric, tin foil, and other relatively flat materials onto a board or Canvas. Next is the different themes of painting. So first is genre painting. Genre painting portrays people in daily activities. During the contemporary period, genre painting took several directions. One of these new approaches is folk genre, which mainly focuses on the everyday activities of the folk. Another approach is using the style of cubism in depicting folk or urban subjects. On the other hand, folk nave is another style wherein it uses a lot of color and spontaneity. Historical painting. So historical painting depicts a scene from the past. 
often has a lesson concerning national value. Interiors painting or just interiors. So this refers to painting of the space inside of a part of a house or a building. This usually reveals the social class of the family living in that particular house, as well as the traits of the people living in it. Landscape painting. So this painting portrays natural scenery or urban scenes. Mixed media is now used in creating landscape painting. Closely li related to landscapes are seascapes which focus on a large bodies of water, particularly the ocean or the sea. Next is portraits painting or portraits. So this refers to a painting portraying one or more specific individuals. This usually portrays the physical characteristics of the subject and seeks to show an understanding of that person's character. Nude paintings. So these are paintings that portray the unclothed human figure. Nowadays, a wide variety of materials and styles can be used in painting nudes. Usually, nude painting sessions are conducted in galleries. Religious painting. So the common subjects of religious painting includes a lone religious image, lives of the saint, and scenes based from the scriptures like the nativity scene and the station of the cross. Last but not the least is the still life painting. So this refers to a painting that depicts natural or man-made objects that form a composition in a natural setting. So a lot of styles can be used by artists in painting, ranging from Baroque and Rococo to Impressionism, Expressionism, and Abstract. So neorealism involves creating representational uh, figures that also look abstract. Hyperrealism or magic realism. The subject is painted in a highly realistic way that is resembles a photograph. And social realism entails creating paintings that depicts socioeconomic and political problems. Another form of visual art is sculpture. Sculpture is the branch of the visual arts that operates in three dimensions. It is one of the plastic arts. Durable sculptural processes originally use carving and modeling. In stones, metal, ceramics, woods, and other materials. But since modernism, there has been an almost complete freedom of materials and processes. And process. In contrast to painting, sculpture has three dimensions, the height, width, and depth. It is created, it is created by either carving, modeling, or assembling parts together. Here are some general kinds of sculpture. First is the freestanding. This is a kind of sculpture that can independently stand in space. It has a flat horizontal base. All its sides contribute to the overall form of the sculpture. Next is relief sculptures. This kind of sculpture does not have a flat horizontal base. The form is projected from a flat surface. There are two types of relief. Low relief or bas relief, which is slightly from the flat surface. And high relief, at least half or more of their circumference from the ground. 
assemblage. This sculpture is formed by putting together materials such as found objects, pieces of paper, sponge, wood scraps, and other materials. Kinetic sculpture. This is considered as a sculpture in motion because the entire sculpture or some parts of the sculpture are moving with the wind or are vibrating with the surrounding air. Welded sculptures. Creating these sculptures involve the process of connect, uh, connecting sheets of metal together by using acetylene or electric torch. Next is glass sculpture. A kind of sculpture where the medium of expression used by the artist is glass. Thus, but not the least for the general kinds of sculpture, is symbolic sculpture. It is a kind of sculpture in which an abstract idea is represented by means of allegory and personification. The next visual art is architecture. Architecture is considered to be one of the most functional branches of the visual arts. We can freely see architecture in our surroundings because architecture involves designing the form of a building while allowing the building to serve its function. It is considered to be the art to inhabit. Throughout Philippine history, both foreign and Filipino architects introduce innovations when it comes to creating buildings and large structures. Even though the design of buildings and homes are still Western inspired, architects started to appreciate Filipino social traditions and cultural values. In fact, local materials were used by architects like Francisco Manosa, a Filipino architect considered as one of the most influential Filipino architects of the 20th century in designing homes and buildings. In addition to that, they sought ways to express this tradition and values in architecture. And here are some forms of contemporary architecture. Well, we have here domestic buildings and houses. Apartment. So apartment refers to a building composed of many residences called units. This is usually built in populated urban areas. Nowadays, in order to maximize the use of space, and because of the increased buying power of the population, condominiums were developed. These condominiums are larger offshoots of apartment. Bahay na bato. The bahay na bato is considered to be a residence of the wealthy. A typical two-story bahay na bato generally has a ground floor that is made of brick or stone and has a wooden upper level. The windows and the level have grills, while the windows at the upper level have sliding shutters. The roof of a typical bahay na bato is lands on four sides. Barong Barong The Barong Barong are houses of the landless poor that are built on any land or area. These are usually found near the esteros, river banks, and bay shores. Spaces along high walls, railroad tracks, spaces near abandoned buildings, and garbage dump, or any vacant lot. Some of these barong barong are built under bridges. Bungalow. This refers to one story house with a wide French porch and large windows. It may also have a terrace, which may be roof or not. Next is the ethnic houses. Bahay Kubo. 
the Bahay Kubo is considered as an ethnic house of Christian peasant families living in the lowland areas. This is typically owned by families belonging in low-income groups. Next is houseboat. The houseboat is basically a boat that also serves as dwelling, dwelling place. The Bajaos or Sama Laut typically reside in houseboats. One and a half story house. The one and a half story is characterized by an upper level or story covering just a half of the lower level. This may also become a split-level house if half of the ground level is higher in such a way that it is halfway between the ground level and the upper level. Split-level house The split-level house in the Philippines has two main levels. The lower-level houses has the kitchen, living and dining areas while the upper level has the bedrooms. These levels are separated by about half or less than half a story. Next is chalet. The Philippine chalet refers to a suburban house that has one story, a two-story house with living quarters on the upper level, or an elevated one-story house. The term chalet came from the term chalet, which refers to a peasant house in Switzerland that has upper levels jutting over the lower levels, a steep roof, and a decorated gable or cable. Commercial buildings. First is the market or palenque. This refers to a place or building for, for buying and selling goods. This is also referred to as tindahan and changge. Nowadays, the palenque has evolved into the supermarkets, with, which put the wet market and the grocery together in the same complex. The mall or ga galeria is considered a more recent evolved form of the palenque. Building that house banks, business, offices, and factories. These buildings have plain wall surfaces, surfaces and large windows. These also have bold rectangular forms and clean lines. Next is government buildings. First, we have the Capitol or Capitolio. So this refers to the building of the provincial government. Most of the capitalia in the country use columns and pediments in the exterior of the buildings. Town hall or municipio. So this refers to the building of the municipal government, the offices of the mayor, the municipal council, the municipal court and jail, and other important offices such as the municipal registrar's office are located here. There are some instances, however, when the municipal court and jail are housed in a separate building called tribunal or tribunal. Public buildings and structures. School or eskwelahan. This refers to a place where young people are educated to become productive members of the community. The most common style of the eskwelahan is American influence which featured a concrete structure elevated on stilts. Kamalig. The kamalig is the Tagalog term for a building used for storing grain. This is considered to be the most economically significant structure among the tribes in northern Philippines. In some provinces, especially those in the lowland areas, the Bahay Kubo or Nipahat can be used as a form of kamalig. Masjid. The masjid or mosque refers to a place of worship of the Muslims. A typical Philippine mosque has the following features. A tower called minaret, a prayer needs called mirab, 
the dome arches that are reinforced with pillars and a full feet called mimbar. Cemetery or cementerio. The cemetery is a place where people bury the, the dead. It has other names such as Campo Santo, Pachon, and Libingan. A cemetery had a small chapel and vaults or niches surrounding the chapel. Nowadays, memorial parks are developed. Next is church or simbahan. The simbahan is a place of worship for a Christian congregation. How a church was designed usually depends on the religious denomination it belongs. Movie house or sinihan. The sinihan is a place where people watch film or motion pictures. Chatter or chatro. The chatro is a building for dance, musical, and theatrical presentations. This is different from an auditorium because the chatro is essentially a separate building compared to the former. And here are some other forms of structures. We have the fort or kuta. These are structures that are built to defend a community against enemies. These are usually found in areas with natural barriers, such as cliffs, hills, narrow passes, mountains, and waters. Lighthouse or parola. The lighthouse is a structure built on an island, peninsula, or rock to ensure that ships will be able to pass through a narrow area safely. Last but not the least is the bridge or tulay. The tulay is a horizontal structure that serves as a passageway between two areas separated by a body of water, a hollow area, or a road. And those are our traditional visual art forms that include painting, sculpture, and architecture. Again, I'm Teacher Rose saying share love to everybody, be a blessing to everyone. Thank you.